DT! It's a red card! Where the goalkeeper is! You need to get some more money out, Robbie! girls and welcome to my preview of Bournemouth against Arsenal Boxing Day Christmas fixtures and before I get started I want to hope that every single one of you had a great Christmas day um, hopefully you got everything you wanted and most importantly I hope that all of you enjoyed yourself with family and friends because that's what is most important now we're gonna go into this game the first game under Mikel Arteta now, what I will say is do not expect miracles immediately. Do not expect Arsenal to be turning into a prime Manchester City because it's going to take time. We all like what Mikel Arteta has been saying so far within the press conferences and we all like what Mikel Arteta is doing on the training pitch. In terms of the team lineup and the formation, that's going to be the interesting one today. He would have had a few days to work with the players and no doubt he will go with what he's seen and what players are performing and showing him a little something. But at the same time, he probably will go with a few players that are tried and tested um, because he needs to get the wins on the board. I don't think that there's going to be wholesale changes immediately. I don't think that Mikel Arteta is going to try and implement the style that he wants immediately. I think first and foremost, what he needs to do is get a basis, get us playing, get the players trust in the process, and most importantly, get us winning matches and getting three points. And I feel that as we start to progress and as we start to get a little bit more confidence, then you can start implementing some of his ideas. Then the players can start learning the process and that's when Mikel Arteta can start looking at some players and saying that's what I want that's not what I want and we can you know shift out the players that he doesn't need and we can start bringing in the new players that he does need um, so yeah it's an exciting you know period it's um, going to be an interesting game um, Bournemouth having a decent season and at home uh, there are no mugs Eddie Howe has got them um, playing well, um, he's a brilliant young manager, um, someone that was tipped to take over at Arsenal, um, even before Unai Emery, um, but I feel that he's at the right club, he's doing the right things, and if we don't play um, to our capabilities, and we play like we have done over the last few months, then we will come unstuck, and we will lose this game, but you know, I look at the Everton game, and that gives us a bit of confidence, uh, the way that we played in that, we weren't so, you know, fluent in the final third, shall we say, but defensively we did look a lot better. Now, on the day itself, I think it helped that Everton uh, were not that great, to be honest. I feel it was two sides that kind of went into it saying, let's just get out of here without losing. Um, it was as though both of them shook hands before the game and said, let's just take a draw. Let's get this over and done with. Um, Everton are waiting for Carlo Ancelotti to take over and Arsenal, we were waiting for Mikel Arteta. So it just felt like a game where both sides were making sure they didn't lose it. And that was the most important thing. Um, but this will be a bigger test because Bournemouth are not going to go into this game wanting anything but a victory. And it's as simple as that. And Arsenal, well, we're going to want to get off to a flying start under Mikel Arteta because if we lose this game, then people are going to start questioning already. People are going to start saying, oh, nothing's changed and this, that, the other. Um, but like I said, you've got to trust the process. You've got to understand exactly what we're doing, what we're going through and what Mikel Arteta needs and wants. Uh, most importantly, the fans need to get on side. The fans need to you know, support the team. The fans need to get behind them for 90 minutes. Um, you know, some people need to concentrate more on supporting the side than worrying about YouTube channels. Um, if you've got something to say, say it before the game or after the game. But while the game's, 
going ahead for 90 minutes, get behind the team, get behind the players, you know, try and give them that extra lift, be that 12th man. It's just as simple as that. So, um, yeah, interesting, like I said, in terms of the lineup, I feel that Mikel Arteta will go with some of the tried and tested. Um, but at the same time, he might give a chance to some of the players that have been impressing him in training. So, with that said, let's go and get into the starting lineup. And um, formation, that's going to be the interesting one. I do feel that we will go with a 4 2 3 1. Like I said, I feel that Mikel Arteta is going to take things slowly before he starts implementing his own ideas. And Manchester City, they normally played with one defensive midfielder in front of the back four, but I feel that's too much too soon with us. We need to start winning matches. We need to start understanding the way that he wants to play before we start trying that. So I feel for now that we may well go with the 4 2 3 1 formation. Um, starting off in goal, Bern Leno. And it is very much going to be Mikel Arteta's most straightforward decision that he has to make. Um, most saves in the Premier League this season, but that's because the defence in front of him has been crap. Um, but listen, he is one of the best goalkeepers in the Premier League. It's as simple as that. Bern Leno. Um, in the back line, first of all, on the right-hand side, I'm going to go with Hector Bellerin. Back from injury. And uh, despite maitland Niles doing pretty well against Everton, Hector Bellerin is the first choice right-back. And we need him in there. So it's as simple as that. Hector Bellerin. In the central defensive area, first of all, Callum Chambers. I thought he was absolutely excellent at Everton. Um, and he's going to have to carry on that kind of form. Rob Holding is not back from his little injury that he's had. He's in training and everything, but he won't be playing in this game. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to have Callum Chambers alongside him. Um, David Luiz started the game against Everton. Socrates, the one before. So it's going to be quite interesting. Um, but I feel that Mikel Arteta may well go for David Luiz. Um, being able to play out from the back, although it's not great at times. But that's what I'm going to go with, and that's David Luiz. Now, in the left-back position, this is where we do have a headache. Kalazinak is injured. Kieran Tierney is injured. So I feel that we have no other choice than to play the young lad, Saka, at left-back. Now, against Everton, he done really well. Um, but he's going to have to watch himself in this game. Um, Bournemouth do like using the width. And they may well target him because he's a young lad, he's inexperienced, he's not a left-back by trade. Um, so we're going to have to double up and help him as well. So interesting, but I'm going to have Saka at left-back. Now, in the two in front of the back four, first of all, I'm going to go with Lucas Torreira. I think he's um, done really well in recent weeks. Looks more like his old self now that he's playing in his more natural position. And that's what I like to see, Lucas Torreira. Alongside him, I'm going to go with Granit Xhaka. And um, there's been quotes over Christmas from uh, Mikel Arteta, from what they're saying anyway, that he actually rates Granit Xhaka. And he tried helping Man City sign him before he signed for Arsenal. Now, I don't know whether these quotes are make-believe, but they're quotes that are out there. Um, and it just shows the importance of Granit Xhaka. He couldn't play in the last game because of the concussion he received at West Ham. Uh, with the rules and everything else but um, he's important to the way that we're playing and you know while we're doing two in there we're going to have to play him and Granit Xhaka for me comes straight into that starting lineup. I'm uh, going to go with a three that's in front first of all on the right hand side I'm going to go with Nicolas Pepe. I thought Reese Nelson done all right against Everton but it's time to bring Nicolas Pepe back. Uh, be interesting to see how we manage Pepe over this period because normally he does have a break over Christmas and there are players that do struggle to adapt to the Christmas period because there's a lot of games coming thick and fast um, and with the fact that we do have Chelsea um, and Manchester United coming up as well within the space of the next week um, it'd be interesting but because he got the rest at Everton I'm going to play him in this one I'm uh, going to move to the left hand side um, and I'm going to go with Martinelli and I feel that he is one player that's really starting to take his chance. He's grabbing games by the scruff of the neck. Really, really like this young lad in the way that he plays. Um, and he's showing some of the older statesmen a few things or two. Um, but I feel that he deserves to keep his place. And that's what I'm going to go with, Martinelli. Now, in the middle of that three, there's going to be talk about who goes in there. 
Um, I don't think Smith Rowe had a bad game against Everton. Very energetic, especially when we were losing the ball and out of possession and everything. Uh, but I feel for this one that we may well go with Meza Ozil. Now, he was missing the game um, against Everton, um, not because of injury or anything else. He did have a slight knock, but Freddie Lundberg had said because of his actions when taken off in the previous game against Man City, he wasn't going to select him anyway because of his petulant attitude. Um, and I like that. Now, Mikel Arteta, he will know Meza Ozil as well as anyone because he actually played alongside Meza Ozil when he was here as captain. Um, he's got to try and bring out the best in him. Can he do that? Is he past it? Is he really bothered? I don't know. But I feel that because Mikel Arteta knows him, that he may well have a word in his ear and maybe he can get a little something out of him. So for this one, I'm going to go with Meza Ozil. Up front as the main striker, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, I know a lot of people have been speaking over recent weeks and saying that Aubameyang clearly doesn't want to be at the club. Well, that's not the case. Forms for strikers, you know, do vary from time to time. They don't always score every single week. I know his body language hasn't looked overly great, but I think that, you know, the whole team haven't looked overly great in terms of their body language. Yes, Aubameyang needs to keep scoring. Yes, he needs to show a little something more. His work rate has been questioned. I'm not questioning that because I do see him work hard. Um, but yeah, we need a little more. And um, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I think that once he gets a couple of goals, he'll get himself going. And maybe under the new manager as well that he can um, you know, revitalise himself, shall we say. So that's what I'm going to go with in terms of the striking options. So... There we go, that is it, that is my preview, that is my predicted 1-11. to This is a really, really tricky one to predict um, because it's Mikel Arteta's first game. Um, it's the first time that you know he's got with the players, system, formation. It's interesting and um, I'm looking forward to it. So there we go, that is it. Um, if you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you smash a like on this video. There'll be a match ratings after the game. Hopefully, we can get off to the winning start under Mikel Arteta. We will wait and see, though. Um, got to get ready in a minute. On my way to Bournemouth. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So, until the next videos, I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of it.